Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. You certainly dawdle over your breakfast. What are we waiting for? Aren't you ever going to give me some sugar? What for? I might want to put some in my coffee, and then I might want to put some on a bird's tail. That is salt. Salt's just a city child's idea. Birds really like sugar. On their tails? Where else? Birds don't drink coffee. How do you know? Mm, the little bird told me. And then he didn't tell you the truth. I bet birds drink all kinds of coffee. Your coffee, maybe. I bet if we lived in the country, the birds would drink so much coffee there wouldn't be any left for us. Birds don't drink coffee, I tell you. It, it keeps them awake. Birds like to stay awake. They stay awake all night and sing and keep people from sleeping. Birds sleep at night just like anyone else. How do you know? Did you ever see one? Well, everybody knows that. You don't have to see one. I bet when we go to the country today, we won't see a single bird sleeping. We won't see a single bird, period. Aren't there any birds in Connecticut? Not in January. They all go south. Where exactly do they go? Oh, south. You said that, but where south? Well, that all depends on the bird. You don't know. No, I don't know. But all I can say is if the birds don't stay in Connecticut all winter long, I don't see why we should. Are birds so much better than us? So much worse. They don't have a house like the one we're going to look at today, if you hurry. Lots of birds have houses. Nice houses, too, and trees. David, wouldn't it be exciting to live in a tree? It would be exciting. How would you like to live in a tree with a girl who even falls off of a stepladder? Mm. Every time I'd fly out to the office, I'd expect to come home to find you sitting under the tree with a nice big shiner. Do birds get black eyes? Oh, <laughs> you would. There'd be a professor standing over you with a magnifying glass saying, My, my, what a rare species. <laughs> this gentleman is the only black-eyed Claudia ever seen in Connecticut. <laughs> now, come on, finish your breakfast and quit stalling. It must be nice to be a bird and live in a tree with someone you're in love with. All the big green leaves around us, and nobody down below could even tell who we, we were there. You'd be all dressed up in red and blue feathers. We'd have nothing to do all day long but be together and sing. That'd be all very pretty, wouldn't it? Mm. If you don't stop dreaming, we'll never get to the country. Oh, won't we? What happens when all the leaves begin to fall off the tree? Well, then we go into the house. Mm. That's just where we're going today. Into the house if you'll get a move on. But the house isn't a tree. Or is it, David? You didn't say for sure. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but the house I saw is not a tree. Oh, it has well. It has a lot more disadvantages. I know. How do you know? You haven't even seen it. But I know where it is. Oh, David, I've seen lots of houses. But I've never seen one that could make as much difference as this well, one. you just wait until you see it. How long does it take to drive up? A mm, little over an hour. That isn't bad, is it, David? You wouldn't think that so near to New York you could find a place that would be such real country. Oh. David, is it a very beautiful house? I'm not going to say another word till you see it. I want you I want you to see the house and have the house talk for itself. You make it sound as if they're we're leaving right away. Well, as soon as I get back from the garage with the car. Are you ready? I am. But what about Bluff? We're taking him along. Oh. And if he knew we were going to the country, he'd be chewing your arm off for keeping him waiting. And 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 then Shakespeare. We're leaving Shakespeare with Mother, don't you remember? We arranged that last night. I did, but I thought maybe you didn't. You gonna get the car right now? That I am. You can't. You promised me last night that today you tell me what a mortgage I'll is. I'll tell you on the way to Connecticut. David, that's mean. On the way to Connecticut, you're gonna tell me all about the house, and I'm never gonna know about the mortgage. Mortgages are the one thing the less you know about, the better. Goodbye. I'll be back with the car right away. David! Goodbye! Hey, darling, the garage isn't in Siberia. Oh, David. I was just thinking how sad it would be if we weren't coming back here. Darling, please, wait till you see the house. 
Maybe you won't want to come back. David, you like it so much, and I'm being terrible, but I... Oh, you're so terrible that I am driven to kiss you. There. I miss you. Hurry back. Mm. Where are you, Shakespeare? I've got to give you your breakfast before we take you to Mama's. Here, Shakespeare, 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 Shakespeare. Oh, there you are, darling. David's socks again. Now, you come in the kitchen and drink your milk while I do the dishes. Honestly, Shakespeare, why are cats so independent? You drink your milk now. We don't want Mama to think we're not feeding you, do we? David is back, Shakespeare. We're not going. I'm coming. Just wait till I dry off my hands. Good morning, Mrs. Norton. Why, Fritz, it's you. Yeah, Mrs. Norton, it's Fritz. Well, come in, Fritz. My, you're up early. Ah, Mrs. Norton, nine o'clock is not early. Six o'clock for me. That is early. Six o'clock? It's terrible to think that anybody has to get up at six o'clock. When I was a boy, we lived on a farm. We get up at four o'clock. On a farm, people get up at four o'clock? Yeah, Mrs. Norton. The cows, they are up, so the people, they must get up too. But four o'clock? I wish Mr. Norton were here to hear that. Yes, yeah, so, Mrs. Norton. <coughs> uh, you have uh, trouble with the radiator? Radiator? Oh, no, it's very hot. Uh, does it make many noises, Mrs. Norton? The other tenants, they complain the radiators make lots of noises in the morning. Wakes people up. We never wake up. Ah, so, uh, that's nice. Well, if it don't bother you, Mrs. Norton, I uh, take a look at the radiators. It's not good they make noises. Oh, no, they don't bother me at all. Say, Fritz, do you mind if I tell Mr. Norton what you said about people on farms getting up at 4 o'clock? Why should I mind? Well, Mr. Norton wants us to live on a farm. But if he hears that, maybe he'll change his mind. Live on a farm? But that is wonderful, Mrs. Norton. He should not change his mind. But but I thought you said... Oh, on the other side, farms, they are one thing. But, but here in America, they are another. You should see the farm. Lisa and Edward, they live on. Oh, in, in Bavaria, they would call it a palace. A, a baron would live in it. But what about getting up in the morning? I know we wouldn't like that. Now, Mrs. Norton, that is for peasants, like in Europe. Here in America, it all goes by, by machinery. Machinery to milk the cows, machinery to bring in the hay, machinery for plowing, everywhere machinery. But I don't think this is the kind of farm Mr. Norton is taking me to. No? Well, you've uh, seen it, Mrs. Norton? Oh, no, we haven't seen it, not yet. We're going to see it this morning, together. <laughs> well, Mrs. Norton, you wait and see it. I know Mr. Norton. He is an American. Well, I, I do not say, Mrs. Norton, that machinery is better. Where is the machinery to, to bring down the rain from the heavens when you need it or, or make the sun shine? But, but every other machine that Mr. Norton will have. I'd like to see that. And you will see it, Mrs. Norton. And you will like living there also. But I like living here, Fritz. So please don't shoo us away. It's David. Don't bang the door down. I'll be there in a second. And I'm almost ready. David. Oh, it's you, Mama. Ah, and your mother, too. I thought I was only the cat sitter. We were going to bring the cat over to you, Mama. You can't expect me to sit home all morning waiting for a cat to come calling. Well, I've got other things to do. Hello, Fritz. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Brown. Well, uh, I'm just uh, going. Fritz and I were just talking about farms, Mama. Fritz lived on a farm. Did you, Fritz? Oh, but that was in Europe. Here, farms, they are uh, different. Fritz thinks a farm is a wonderful place to live. And he's sure that the one David likes will have all kinds of machinery on it and things. Well, from what David said last night, I'm not sure that I... Oh, and Julia called, and when I told her about it, she said, there's some very beautiful farms around Eastbrook. I never think of Julia as exactly a milkmaid. How does she know? Oh, Nancy Riddle, who's a good friend of hers, lives up near there. Julia says she has a wonderful place. I don't doubt it. The Riddles always do. I bet that's just what David's farm is like. Great big place with a, a, a long drive going up to it with trees on both sides. David didn't say anything about a long drive last night. Oh, you know David, Mommy. He's trying to surprise me. It's just like bluff. Hmm. David didn't sound to me as though he were doing any teasing. He sounded far too excited. Oh, Mama, now don't be silly. I know just what the house is going to look like. It has white fences all around it. 
I've always loved those white fences. The fact that you love them is hardly a proof that they're going to be all around your house. David loves them, too. How do you know that? He must, because I do. If he knows you do, Mrs. Norton, of course he does. Now, if you uh, excuse me, I'll go downstairs to see about the radiator there. Oh, oh, Fritz, you mustn't go yet. You've got to tell Mom all about the machinery. What machinery? Well, the machinery on the farm, of course. There are machines for milking and plowing and bringing down rain and waking the cows up and all sorts of things. But Fritz hasn't been there. Of course he hasn't been there, but he knows all about the machinery on farms. No, I do not know about it, Mrs. Norton. I mean, I was an old-fashioned farmer. I believe in the machines that, that God made, my hands. But for the young people... Well, it's not the same. I don't think it's going to be like living on a farm at all. If Fritz is right about all the wheels going around, it's going to be like living inside a watch. And it has window boxes with ivy. Don't you like ivy against a white wall? And a fine big door with a white porch thing over it. Don't you remember David talking about the door? I remember him talking about the door. I also remember a movie called uh, Gone with the Wind, which you and I saw together. You mean you think the farm is going to look like Tara? I mean that you think it is. I know it is. But that was the South, Claudia, and this is Connecticut. That was a mansion, and this is a salt box. What's wrong with salt boxes? Don't you remember David saying there was a valid appellation for a... Uh, you, you remember what he said? I remember, better than you do. Besides, David likes it. I know he does, and it won't be polite if you're too disappointed. How can I possibly be disappointed when I know what it's like? Oh, Mom, I'm just busting with curiosity to see it right now. Not a soul could guess from seeing your face. But, Mama, what'll I do when I see it? I don't want to leave here. Well, you are leaving here in about two minutes, and you better not keep David waiting. Just say I won't. I'm going to put my coat on right now. I'm going to wear the tweed one for the country. You better wear the beaver one for the cold. And don't put it on yet. You'll only get overheated. David will be here any minute. Well, Mrs. Norton, I think I go now, and uh, I hope you like the farm. I'm going to love it, I think. That is David. I wonder what's been keeping him. David? Hello. Hello, Mother. Hello, Fritz. Hello. Hello, it's a convention. David, you've been such a long time. I've been dying of impatience. You have, eh? When I left, you could hardly drag yourself away from the table. What's happened? Fritz and Julia and Mama have been telling me what the farm is going to be like. And, David, I can hardly wait to see it. Well, come on, darling, because neither can I. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. You may hear complaints from Junior when you ask him to do some chores, but ask him to carry a case of Coca-Cola in from the car, and he'll hop out there like a flash. Why not? He can pour himself a bottle of Coke as reward when he's through. And you'll probably find him on the phone soon after, inviting the gang over. There are good times ahead for the whole family when there's plenty of Coke in the refrigerator. Why not pick up a case tomorrow? Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes. Mm-hmm.